I, I love I love the wetlands. You know, it's it's part of my life. It's part of who I am. And um, it's really important to me to see that these wetlands survive, that the lake survives for future generations. It's who we are. And inherently it's 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 in our culture, it's part of who we are as Utahns. And here in the Western United States, there's not a not a more important resource that we should be investing in to protect and to save than this Great Salt Lake. And um, it's something that cannot be recreated. This is our opportunity. It's our opportunity today to make the investment to save this lake. And we need to do everything we can to do that. The Great Salt Lake has been steadily declining for a number of decades. We basically had this unprecedented flood event in the 1980s. And since then, because we divert so much water of our fresh water before it reaches the lake, the lake has been on this um, basically downward trend of declining lake levels every year. For the past decade or so, we've been in one of the worst droughts ever recorded. So it, we kind of call it this mega drought and we had exceptionally low snow years for year after year. And that sort of catapulted the decline of the Great Salt Lake to the point where last November, we reached a historical low for the lake. And when that happens, the salinity levels of the lake itself get so high that it threatens the whole ecosystem to potentially collapse. So the brine sh shrimp and the brine flies, which are two species that are really important, kind of reach that mortality threshold when the salinity levels get so high. On top of that, you know, the lake is really stressed, the ecosystem is close to collapsing, and the wetlands themselves also have less water and become even more important habitat. A healthy lake is somewhere between 12 and 16% salinity. Last year, we saw our salinities getting into unhealthy ranges. They got up to 19%. So we're really concerned about that. The industry is, is really important on a world scale. Almost 50%, almost half of all brine shrimp that's used in the world comes off of Great Salt Lake. And that's why the birds are here too. Birds are here because they're eating brine shrimp, brine flies coming off of this lake. So that's why we've done everything we can and made the investment to ensure that doesn't happen. You know, this, this isn't uncharted territory. We've seen other lakes, other salty terminal lakes in the world. Uh, we've seen Owens Lake in California, great example. Other lakes that have dried up principally because of diversions, human use upstream. It's the largest source of pollution in Los Angeles. Great Salt Lake is seven times bigger than Owens Lake. Do you want to talk about significant, uh, exponentially greater problem than what they faced in California? That's here. And so that's why we have to do everything we can to make the investment to be smart with the resource and to utilize it to its highest and best use and protect the Great Salt Lake. Well, the history of the Owens Valley is water. When the Department of Water and Power, LA's Department of Water and Power came in, they purchased the farms and any small piece of of land they could at rock bottom prices for the water. Uh, they dug a ditch and they shipped it south. All that water that used to feed Owens Lake, all of that disappeared because it got ditched. It drastically changed the climate and the environment. To kind of put it in perspective, you know, Owens Lake is about 110 square miles. And Owens Lake is one of the largest uh, emitters of PM10 in North America. As a comparison, the Great Salt Lake is about 1,700 square miles. So just to kind of put it in perspective that Owens Lake, this really small saline terminal lake system, which is a very similar type of ecosystem to the Great Salt Lake, once it dried up, is you know, sort of this environmental catastrophe that's cost the city of Los Angeles billions of dollars to try to mitigate. And there's a population of about, you know, less than 50,000 people in the Owens Lake Valley, whereas along the Great Salt Lake, the Wasatch Front population is about two and a half million. So, I mean, the difference is really staggering and almost hard to comprehend. Well, just the dust off that uh, lake from the studies that they've shown, um, 
If we don't continue to can have water out in that lake, the dust is absolutely toxic and not good for my kids and or anybody else's kids. If you're, if you're asking me whether the fate of the Great Salt Lake is the same as the Owens, no, it can't be. Um, I am so encouraged by the fact that even that question's being asked. Uh, the younger people, my children's generation, are asking the questions, what can we do? And just the fact that those questions and demands are being made by the generation behind me, I'm totally encouraged. Figuring out ways that we can use water more efficiently in our wetlands and manage water more efficiently and send more water to the lake is of course going to help mitigate some of those worst impacts of dust storms around the Great Salt Lake. But of course we need a lot of other buy-in from the agricultural community and we need to change the way that we use water in this valley ultimately to save the Great Salt Lake and reverse the decline of lake levels over time. I think DU has an incredible opportunity to help all of these stakeholders really leverage funding to secure more money to get these vast habitat improvements done. And so, you know, in our wetlands, unfortunately, we do have a lot of infrastructure that's close to failing. We have a lot of water control structures that needs to be replaced, and maybe it's not the most glamorous of work, but we know what this ecosystem provides and we know how valuable it is. And DU has an incredible opportunity to, to help secure a lot of these habitats for future generations. We have this fantastic partnership with the Department of Natural Resources and Ducks Unlimited. And it really makes a difference here in the state of Utah in building awareness, raising money, and doing projects on the ground that make a difference. Um, at, here in Utah, we have this really unique ecosystem. We're in the middle of a desert, huge, vast American West desert. Right in the middle of that, we have the Great Salt Lake and the surrounding wetland areas. And you have this, this unique interaction with this salt water body and the fresh water inflows that create this brackish system. Beautiful, productive wetlands. Millions and millions of migratory birds stop over here. And partnerships with organizations like Ducks Unlimited help us manage, maintain, and, and improve these, you know, and, and save these areas for future generations to enjoy. It's a fantastic partnership. And um, I love, I love working with Ducks Unlimited. I think what's so special about the Great Salt Lake is that it's so close to one of the largest population centers in the Intermountain West, and not everyone even knows that it's really here and that these vast wetlands exist and how many bird species they support. So it, it's a really unique opportunity to work in this really wild landscape that is so close to millions of people. You know, for, for Utahns, it's the namesake of our capital. We can't really let the Great Salt Lake dry up, ultimately. We've invested hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, in conservation measures, in conservation in our cities, and in really focusing on how do we get water to this lake. That's what the big investment has been. So the state of Utah is committed to this, the wetlands, to the lake itself, and the surrounding ecosystem in protecting, preserving, and maintaining it for today and for future generations. Mm -hmm.